pneumocystis gyrovici pneumonia. It used to be called pneumocystis carini, but this organism was recently reclassified and renamed. So of course I'll refer to it as pneumocystis gyrovici. And this uh, bug essentially is transmitted by aerosol droplets in the air and it causes no disease in immunocompetent patients. But the key thing to this organism is that it does cause pneumonia in patients who are immunocompromised. And that's the big take home point with this. Now which population of patients are we talking about? Most commonly, of course, we're talking about HIV positive patients, in particular those that have a CD4 count less than 200. And as those of you know, that this is now classified as being AIDS once the CD4 count drops below 200. Another category of immunocompromised patients are patients who are receiving organ transplants. And the reason is because they're given medications that can suppress their immune system. Very similarly, cancer patients can also be on medications that can suppress their immune system. In terms of symptoms, the symptoms of the pneumonia that they get is the same symptoms as a regular person's pneumonia. So fever, difficulty breathing, increased respiratory rate, uh, cough of course. So there's nothing special about the symptoms. Same symptomatology as most pneumonias. Diagnosis. Well, of course, chest x-ray, and that's going to show that bilaterally you have infiltrates in the lung. And then, of course, a pulse ox, which shows that the patient is hypoxic, essentially just meaning that their ox oxygen saturation has decreased. But the key to the diagnosis of this type of pneumonia is that you have to get a sample of the sputum, either induced uh, by cough or through bronchoscopy. And that has to be analyzed. You have to actually do a stain to get the histopathological demonstration. And the organism, of course, is pneumocystis gyrovici. And this organism has a special uh, stain it's called a methanamine silver stain and this silver stain is used to uh, show the organism and what you see is these round cysts and that will be characteristic of the organism in terms of treatment the most common treatment is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole and this is sometimes abbreviated TMP SMX and this is given either IV or PO so now let's take a look at a couple of vignettes here while making rounds on the rehab floor of your hospital you see a 62 year old female who was recently transferred from the acute care section of the hospital where she was admitted for urosepsis she is a liver transplant recipient and her specialist has been take, tapering her immunosuppressive drug regimen for the last two months. According to the nursing staff, the patient became hypoxic suddenly and has a low-grade fever and cough. You note that she looks ill and uncomfortable and has an increased respiratory rate. Chest x-ray re reveals diffuse bilateral interstitial infiltrates. Which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Well, she's a transplant patient and they even tell you that she's on immunosuppressive drugs. So she's an immunocompromised patient. And she's got all the classic uh, symptoms of pneumonia, cough, fever, being hypoxic. So she definitely has pneumonia. And because of her immunocompromised status, the most common or most likely is pneumocystis. So C. Next question. 71-year-old woman comes to the emergency department because of shortness of breath retrosternal chest pain, fever, dry cough. Uh, she blushes and she admits that she has had many male suitors. She does not smoke. However, she does drink moderate amount of alcohol. 
She recalls having an episode of fever, headaches, joint pain, loss of appetite, and mild sore throat a few months ago. And she did not seek medical care because she assumed it was a virus. Her temperature is 38 Celsius. Respiratory rate is 35. She has bibasal or rails and significant lymphadenopathy. Chest x-ray reveals bilateral patchy alveolar infiltrates. Histologic evaluation of sputum obtained by bronchial alveolar lavage shows round structures when stained with methanamine silver. An important question to ask. It was a great question. They don't tell you that she's immunocompromised, but they give you this sentence right here. She recalls having an episode of fever, headaches, joint pain, loss of appetite, and a mild sore throat a few months ago. What that is, is acute HIV syndrome. When a person acquires HIV, they can develop this type of uh, symptomatology. And that's what this clinical vignette is describing. And this happened uh, a few months ago. Now, she's immunocompromised because she's HIV positive and she's also admitted to having many male suitors so you really need to ask her about any kind of unprotected sexual intercourse because if you don't use condoms you can definitely acquire HIV through sexual intercourse so the answer is B and then finally Four years ago, a 30-year-old heroin addict who habitually used shared needles when taking the drug intravenously tested positive for HIV by Elissa and then Western Blot. He now presents to the physician on duty at a community clinic with fever, dyspnea, tachypnea, and peripheral cyanosis. Chest X-ray film reveals extensive ground glass opacities in the lower zones of both lungs. Physician would expect which of the following? Well, it's a documented HIV patient with now fever, chest x-ray findings that are consistent with pneumonia. And this question basically goes into a lot of medications, and the appropriate medication to treat this is, of course, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole.